what is it? Environmental social governance. That's right. Yeah. That's ESG. Yeah. And it's, that stands for exactly like what is the goal of ESG? Corporate the control. Stated goal. It, but the oh, stated no. goal. So it is to create the it, it is to create a metric, a measurement tool to assess the likely long term viability of a corporation based on its environmental, social, and internal corporate governance policies. Long-term vi viability for the nation? No, for the corporation. For the corporation. Because here's what's going on is ESG was created at the, at the United Nations in 2003 by a guy named James Gifford. And the point was, he said, well, there's at that point about $6 trillion of money that's sitting out there. It's people's pensions. It's like passive, right? Mutual funds, index fund, all this, mutual funds particularly, 401ks, there's state pension funds in particular, $6 trillion in the world sitting out there that's just people's retirement funds gaining interest, playing in the market through this, you know, money management. And the question James Gifford asked was how, he was a forest guy. He was like, how do we apply that to saving the forest, save the trees, right? And so he came up with this idea that if we had environmental assessments, anytime you have a metric, you can use that metric in some way or another, in other words, or you can game that metric. If we had metrics to say, well, how environmentally compliant our companies, like kind of an extension of corporate social responsibility, they used to call it. If we can measure that, then what we can do is we can start directing, you know, we can say, well, companies that have a long term or that, that have good environmental policy have a better long term portfolio. But these are 30 year investments because they're people's pensions. So that's long term success that we're interested in, not boom and bust cycles in the market. So the, the stated ambition not just to do what I said, but is specifically to do that to bring that passively invested money into what they call impact investing. In other words, to do activism with investor money by investing in, you know, ener green energy companies or green other environmental companies or socially just companies or, you know, companies with good governance. And in principle, at least the good governance thing should work. But the thing is, is corruption exists. I don't know <laughs> how they neglected to account for that if we give them all the credit in the world. So like right now, it's super corrupt. I just did a podcast about this where I had this document. It's not like some mysterious document. It's on the Harvard website where they're talking about corporate bonuses, right? So it's a Harvard corporate law website document. And they're talking about corporate bonuses and the corporate bonus structure and that your governance score, your, e, your ESG score, so the G part will go up if you give corporate bonuses to yourself for implementing ESG, that's just naked corruption, right? And so that so they can come in and say, well, you want to go to ESG score, and they can make that important or whatever. I guess they have made that very important because everybody's doing it. And they say, well, if you want a good ESG score, you need to put an activist on your board, or you know, 30% women on your board, or DEI requirements on your Boeing board, or you have to have a good corporate equality index score, which is published by the Human Rights Campaign, which means that you're not just having a non-discriminatory workplace for LGBT, but you're also promoting LGBT agendas. You're lobbying on behalf of bills one way or the other, and the legislature will tell you which ones. A couple of years ago, they told the airlines they needed to fly around uh, activists to the pride parade so they'd have more people with them uh, for reduced what? prices. Oh, yeah. Why do you think Dylan Mulvaney's face was on a beer can? The whole fallout of the Dylan Mulvaney explosion at Bud Light, all of it was about the CEI score because then the human rights campaign came out and said, well, you didn't stand up for Dylan, so we're going to lower your score anyway. And they were like, oh, no. And then everything got all tossed up. That These numbers mean a lot to people. So the stated goal was to take to, to create a set of measurements that they could use to justify taking trillions of dollars of other people's money and doing activist investing with it. And that all turned into the S is now DEI. It's woke. It's woke social justice. It's not social responsibility. It's whatever they want. Elon and, Musk bought Twitter and his social score for Tesla went through the floor. Like, what did that have to do? And then all of a sudden, Tesla's a racist company they accused him of. Like, what are you talking about, right? They didn't like that he bought Twitter. Weapons manufacturers like Dick Cheney's Halliburton were, you know, social bad, 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 bad. And then all of a sudden the conflict in Ukraine breaks out and they're like, oh, we need we need missiles. And they changed the score basically overnight. That that's a because the social environment of the world changed. These are real things. Like this is all verifiable. So I think it's an instrument. Maybe it wasn't meant to be in 2003. Maybe the guy just wanted to save the trees. 
but it's become an instrument of control and, and effectively a social credit system for corporations to force corporations. And that's what Larry Fink said about it on TV. He said, we're, you could pull up the, I'm sure we can find the video and pull it up where he says that we're interested in forcing behaviors and that's what we're doing. 